To me, the Fahrenheit temperature scale seems a little bit arbitrary. I mean, why should water freeze at 32 degrees Fahrenheit? Why that integer? And what exactly does zero degrees represent? Well, there's a lot of sources out there that say zero degrees is the mixture of salty water and ice, and 100 degrees is maybe that was meant to be human body temperature. But if you really dig into the literature and do your research, you'll find that is not how Fahrenheit defined his scale. And I think the true story is more interesting and it's more scientific. So the story kind of starts on the worst day of Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit's life, which was August 14th, 1701. On that day, both of his parents died suddenly of mushroom poisoning. Now he was living in Danzig, Poland at the time, but after their deaths, he was sent to Amsterdam, which is here, to be an apprentice, a bookkeeper. But he hated that job. In fact, he ran away so many times that his employers put out a warrant for his arrest. And he would travel around Europe, and it was during these travels that he realized his true calling in life was as a scientific instrument maker. He loved things like glass blowing. And then in 1708, he was in Copenhagen and possibly trying to get the warrant lifted, he met with the mayor of Copenhagen, who, as luck would have it, was a famous astronomer named Ole Romer. Now, today we remember this guy for realizing that it was the finite speed of light that caused the eclipses of Jupiter's moons to appear slightly at the wrong times because light had to take time to travel to Earth, so it depended on where Earth was in its orbit. Anyway. What's more pertinent to this part of the story is uh, that Romer broke his leg in 1702. And while he was bedridden, he had to do something to pass the time and he decided to invent a whole new temperature scale. And so he did. And it was kind of a weird one. He had seven and a half degrees as the freezing point of water and 22 and a half degrees as human body temperature. Now that may sound a little odd, but Romer wanted water to boil at 60 degrees on his scale because as an astronomer he had a lot of experience with splitting things in 60. And so if you know that, if you divide that scale in half and then in half again and then in half once more, you find that well, if water freezes at the bottom uh, just an eighth the way up the scale and human body temperature is three eighths its way up the scale. So it makes a little bit more sense. Now, Fahrenheit decided to adopt this scale as his own after that meeting, except he found the scale, quote, inconvenient and inelegant on account of the fractional numbers. So he decided to scale everything up just a little bit. So he set water freezing to eight degrees and human body temperature to 24. So really the original Fahrenheit thermometer had that as its scale. But sometime later, uh, Fahrenheit just decided to multiply his whole scale by four. Now that sent freezing water to 32 degrees, where it stays to this day, and it sent human body temperature to 96, which is pretty close to what it is on the current scale. Now why he did that exactly, no one is quite sure. Some people think he just wanted finer divisions on his scale. He wanted a finer gradation, but I think there may be a kind of more scientific reason than that. because. See, Fahrenheit was really a very excellent instrument maker. He could make his thermometers all agree at a time when that was a very rare thing to find. And he pioneered the use of mercury as a measuring liquid in thermometers, and he developed new ways of purifying the liquid to make that work. And for all of this uh, work, he was inducted into the British Royal Society. And there he would have read the works of people like Boyle and Hooke and Newton, we know. He did read that literature, and in those documents, he would have found the idea that a degree on your temperature scale should correspond to a fractional increase in the volume of the measuring liquid. And if you look at the Fahrenheit scale today, you find that for every one degree Fahrenheit increase in temperature, a volume of mercury increases by one part in 10,000. So that, I think, is the real reason that he multiplied his scale by four giving us roughly the scale that we have today. So what does zero degrees actually correspond to on this scale? Well, a lot of people will tell you it's a particular mixture of salt and water and ice, 
But the problem is if you actually make the mixture that Fahrenheit says he used, you don't get zero degrees Fahrenheit. You don't really get that close. So I think the way zero degrees Fahrenheit really works is it's about the coldest that it got in Copenhagen where uh, Romer devised his scale. And it's roughly the coldest it ever gets in Europe. So the idea was just to have a scale that would always have positive numbers even in the winter. And then the ice and brine was later used as a way to calibrate new thermometers. But I don't think it's the way they made the Fahrenheit scale. So there you go. That is how the Fahrenheit scale actually came to be.